الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, welcome to the Ta'weez project Alhamdulillah, today we have Ustad Abdurrahman Hassan with us um, We've been getting a lot of questions online on the Facebook page and through our email from a lot of you guys out there um, wanting to know more about the issues of Ta'weez um, and basically we want to try and clarify some of the doubt with regards to the, the, the issues that you guys have been raising and sort of help understand the questions um, so Ustad Abdurrahman is going to try and help us with that today inshallah before we get started inshallah can you first and foremost sort of define what a Ta'weez is um, for the people for the people that don't know inshallah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Lahu alhamdul hassan wa thala'u al-jameel wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa hadahu la sharika lah yaqulu al-haqqa wa huwa yahdi sabil wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa attabi'ina lahum bi ihsan ila yawm din amma ba'd First of all jazakallahu khairan for having me and for giving having good thoughts uh, about me inshallah ta'ala and uh, I ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala gives you gives you guys tawfiq amen in the project that you're doing, inshallah ta'ala, which is a good cause, barakallahu feekum, uh, purifying the people from this shirk concept, Definitely. and etc. Jazakumullahu khairan. Um, the uh, first question that you asked me was, sort of, if we can sort of set the groundwork, set the foundations of what a ta'weez is, what it entails, what is and what isn't a ta'weez, you know, has it got any other names or that people might know it by, um, and etc. The ta'weez is that which somebody wears, it, either, it can either be a, some people they wear uh, rocks, mm-hmm. some wear their bones, some might even just be a string. Mm-hmm. Differs from person to person, they made different things. But if a person wears it, uh, or it's worn to to get rid of an evil eye. Okay, like a protection. A protection. Okay. Now, if the person believes that this thing which they are wearing right now is actually protecting them, then this becomes shirk akbar. A major shirk. Okay. If they actually believe that this ta'weez or this tamimah, yeah. and the plural is tamaim, in which they are wearing, if they believe that this can actually remove the evil eye or get rid of the evil eye or protect them, mm-hmm. then this is shirk akbar. Okay. But if the person believes that this is a means, it's a wasila. I don't believe this can remove or protect me, mm-hmm. but I believe it's a means of protection, then this is minor shirk. Like a medicine. Medicine. Okay. But medicine, the means is actually proven okay. by tajruba, experiment. Uh-huh. Um, but the tamima, by the religion, we've realized that it doesn't do anything. It doesn't okay. help you. It's not proven to be a means. Okay. And so if, sorry, if somebody uh, says, you know, I, I wear this thing for uh, helping me in my business, for good fortune, to increase me in my wealth, or... Uh, for example, a husband and wife, you know, who've been suffering problems and they've been arguing a lot. So they go to see somebody and they, they you know, they get given this taweez or, I mean, uh, has it got any other names? Now, uh, in Arabic it's called taweez. In Somalis they call it hirsi. Okay. Um, the Arabs they call it tamaim. Tamaim. Uh, and in the uh, yeah. uh, Asian, they call it uh, taweez. Okay. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said in the ruqa wa tamaim wa tiwala shirkun The Prophet sallallahu said these three are shirk The tamima mm-hmm. that the person wears The uh, ruqa which is the ruqya which is that consists of shirk in it And the tiwala which is that the spell that the woman asks for her to be placed on her husband mm-hmm. so he can have love for her mm-hmm. Or that which she herself is placed on so her husband can love her or the vice versa mm-hmm. this is called tiwala okay. all of them are shirk so it can either be major shirk which is oh if that person is actually wearing it for their business mm-hmm. they are wearing the tamima yeah. so they can get their business flowing and they believe that this can do it mm-hmm. then this becomes shirk akbar they leave the religion because of it and if they believe that no allah is the one who makes my business flow but i'm only wearing this as a means mm-hmm. Then in this situation, it becomes a minor shirk and Allah knows best. So just to clarify that point before we move on, inshallah, potentially somebody wearing this, would it mean that that person would have to 
retake their shahada or re-establish their is- Islam? Is it something that bad that it can make a person a kafir or a, not a Muslim anymore? No, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he himself is saying that it is shirk, mm-hmm. and anything that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam referred to it as a shirk, then you can see the danger and the seriousness of it. Mm-hmm. So one has to abstain and be as far as possible as they can. And that's what we would also need to remember. Uh, the hadith which Imam Al Bayhaqi rahimahullah he narrated in his Shu'ab Al Iman, and also the hadith itself is in Sahih Al Bukhari, in Hadith Abdullah Al Masood. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "La inna Allah lam yajal shifaakum." Allah did not make your cure in what, fi ma harrama alaykum that which He has made haram from you. Okay. So anything which Allah has made haram, there is no cure in it for us. Uh-huh. Our cure we can find it in the halal things. So trying to find a cure, whether it's for your business, mm-hmm. whether it's for your career, whether it's for your children, whether it's even for yourself and your health, trying to look for it in that which Allah has prohibited, is actually only going to increase your illness. Mm-hmm. And that is the hadith in which um, the noble companion and uh, Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he had it in his, in his arm. He was wearing a, a string on his arm. Okay. So he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet then said to him وَيْحَكَ مَا هَذِهِ Woe be to you, what is this that you're wearing? Why are you wearing this? What's mm. the cause to it? And then he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm wearing it from the wahina which is a form of illness. Okay. It's to protect me from this illness. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Innaha la tazeeduka illa wahnan. This thing that you're wearing, it does not increase you except in weakness. You're going to only become weak from wearing it. And then the Prophet added on saying to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Law mitta if you died, Imran, if you, were, if you died, wa hiya alayka and this thing you're wearing was on you, ma aflahta abadan, you will never have found success and prosperity. Ahmed narrated that in his Muslim. So the person who's wearing it needs to realize that whatever you're looking for, mm-hmm. you're not going to gain it mm-hmm. whilst you have this thing on you. Get rid of it. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu he ordered him to destroy it and to get rid of it. Subhanallah. Sallallahu alayhi wa So from anywhere from the sunnah, you're saying that there's nowhere from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa where he advised us to wear these kind of things or um, spoke about them except in telling people to destroy them and get rid of them and speaking about them as being shirk. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And that's not only what he said, salawatullahi wasalamu alayhi, because our understanding in the religion is also taken, or the way we practice our religion is we base our, what the Prophet says or what he does on how the companions understood it. Mm-hmm. It's very important, it's very vital that we look at that. Nah. So the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, they understood the danger and the seriousness of it mm-hmm. as, as well. Because when they saw that how in different situations him prohibiting it, speaking against it, rebuking it, mm-hmm. scolding those who were wearing it, they realized how dangerous it was. Mm-hmm. And here you see Abdullah ibn uh, Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He came into the house and now dakhala ala imra'ati, he came into the house and he saw his own wife. His own wife. And wafi unuqiha on her neck, she was wearing it. Mm-hmm. And then he fajabadahu wa qata'ahu. He took it off her neck and he ripped it off. Subhanallah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Wow. And then he said to her, Did the family of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, after Allah gave them something and they made her made them rich and Allah gave them rizq, are they going to wear this? Mm-hmm. Are they going to associate partners with Allah? Rather, he said, Are they going to associate partner, partners with Allah? Subhanallah. So the Sahabas also understood that the, this act of wearing the tamima and the tamaim is shirk or the ta'weez. Lakin Ustad, some people they say obviously we've had many messages about these issues and some of the, the, the viewers will be able to relate to this that some people say that if the, 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 the thing that they're wearing, you know, it only contains the Quran or the Kalam of Allah or maybe, you know, um, the names and attributes of Allah inside of it. And you know, they say that their their Imam or their Mufti or their Mawlana has, has given this and advised them to wear this for, for, for the things that we've mentioned, for wealth and good fortune and etc. Um, that there's permissibility in this uh, from the Sharia. And they also claim that you know there are evidences from uh, some of the companions um, where they would, they would wear this. I mean, is there anything good? Now, in this issue of uh, the tamima in which they wear, mm-hmm. the Quran, the tamima or the ta'weez. Yes. Uh, wearing it and it has the Quran on it or has the words of Allah in it or etc. Mm-hmm. 
What's the ruling pertaining to this? Now, the Sahaba of the, companion, the, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ amongst themselves, and the people of knowledge, generally speaking, uh, they differed on it. Is it permissible or is it not permissible? There's okay. difference of opinion. Mm -hmm. Some said it's impermissible and others they said it is. It is permissible. permissible. Now we have to now realize if there's a khilaf, there's a difference of opinion, what, what did the Quran instruct us to do? Allah says in the Quran, فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ If you differ upon a matter and you have difference of opinion, فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ Bring it back to Allah and His Messenger. إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ yeah. So every difference of opinion, every argumentation that we find, we always have to bring this issue back to the Kitab and the Sunnah. And the answers would be there, inshallah ta'ala. Mm -hmm. The Quran, or the Sunnah, when we look at it, we find that the argument or the, 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 the side that says that it's impermissible mm -hmm. to use the Tamima that has Quran in it is stronger. Okay. And this is not, uh, this is the view held by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It is also this hold, view held by Abdullah ibn Abbas. Hudayfa ibn Yaman held that, hold that, held that view. Uqba ibn Amin held that view as well. Imran ibn Hussein also held, held that view. Okay. And other companions, they all held the view that is haram. Okay. And they are stronger, without a doubt. Yeah. So why are they stronger? And how are they stronger? Three reasons I'll summarize it, why they're stronger. Number one is the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he did not... Um, Distinguish between the tamima that has Quran in it and the one that doesn't have Quran. The Prophet didn't. It's general. Whenever he prohibited, it was always general. Okay. And he said, "Inna al-ruqa wa tamaimu wa tiwala, tamaim, general, unrestricted." When the Prophet prohibited from Imran and Hussein, he didn't say, "Imran, you're wearing a t something on your arm. What is it that you're wearing? Let me see. Is it Quran on it?" Uh -huh. He didn't ask him. Uh -huh. yeah. And the scholars they say, "Taqir al-bayan fi waqt al-haja," the Prophet to clarify a matter. At a time when it's needed, mm -hmm. is obligatory on him. So if it was there, if the, okay. if this issue right now, yeah, it needed distinguishing, mm -hmm. the Prophet would have been the one that who does what he would have clarified. Alayhi salatu salam. He would have said, look, mm -hmm. it's not all haram. There are this and that. He would have clarified it. The fact that he did not clarify it like that, mm -hmm. and he left it unrestricted, we have to leave it unrestricted. That's number one. Okay. So no companion can come and specify what the Prophet unrestricted. Number two is. We have to close the door that's going to lead to shirk. Mm -hmm. And we and what you tend to find is that these tamaim that people wear, a lot of them are being fooled and tricked to think that what they're wearing it has Quran in it. Mm -hmm. And so the Sharia ah has a concept which is saddu dharai, the doors that lead to something yes. are closed. And that's you, true actually because we, that's a lot of the time that's what we find. Mm. That people will contact us and they'll say we, we've been given this thing um, but it's just got Quran, okay. you know. Um, like in when they actually open it and they look for themselves um, and mashallah alhamdulillah uh, you know more and more people now they're taking the ta'weeth challenge they're, 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 they're t making the, the effort and they're, they are getting the courage they're gaining the courage they're seeing more and more people do it and they're more inclined to open it themselves and alhamdulillah there's videos out there um, some of the links will be below um, on how to you know destroy a ta'weeth um, like in this is what we're finding Someone said, I've been told that it's Qur'an, but when they open it, they find that it's not the Qur'an. Exactly. You know? So, and uh, the thing that we also have to realize is that the Sharia has a concept which is al hakamu lil aghlabiyya The ruling is, it revolves around the majority. Mm -hmm. It doesn't revolve around nadir, things that are rare that happen. The majority of the people are wearing shirk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. fewly find a few people who are wearing Qur'an maybe. But yeah. the majority, the overwhelming majority are wearing shirk on it. And numbers and boxes and... Code, codes and stuff that we don't understand. Yeah. So the second reason, as, as I mentioned, was said the, the 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 third point, sorry, is the people who are wearing it, they go into places which are filthy, like toilets. Mm -hmm. Um, the thing that is in it a lot of times is left dirty. If the, if there is even Quran written on it, yeah. it's left dirty. It's not cleaned. It's not well looked after. And then it leads to the verses of Allah wa Taala to become be put in the filthy, dirty places, belittling it, belittling it. Yeah. And the Quran of Allah wa ta'ala is one that we were told and we were ordered mm. uh, to honor the words of Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. So those three main reasons alone uh -huh. show the opinion of the scholars who held that is impermissible to even have Quran written on it, on it mm -hmm. are stronger and Allah knows best. Barakallahu feek Ustad. So one of the other questions we get is um, a lot of people they find, because uh, you mentioned it earlier, boxes... Um, the Quran being translated into, I think it's 
uh, abjud numbers or mm. s- some some mm. kind of number system so. uh, where people don't actually write the Quran, they write numbers instead. Mm. Um, and uh, essentially, th- we're asking: w- Is this permissible? Does this have a basis within the religion? Mm. Um, does this have a basis within the Sharia? And and you know, if you could elaborate on that, inshallah. Again, no. This is, has no basis. The, the fact that the Quran is then converted into digits and numbers, this is the kutab of the Quran, mm-hmm. the fortune tellers, the magicians. This is what they write. And the kalamu, that's their speech. And it's codes that they use for the shayateen. A Muslim now who believes that, that this is the Quran, mm. where does it say in the Quran that the Quran, the, uh, so Basmala is, or the, the Quran? 786. 786, for instance. Like this, yeah. where, where does that, where, where basis has, has, has that got in the Sunnah? Mm. Did the Sahabas ever understand it like that? Do we ever find it in the Sunnah of the Prophet? No. That to be added on, the scholars who said that, even the scholars who said that it's permissible, mm-hmm. that it's permissible to use the Quran as a tamima, they said it has to be clear that's the Quran. Okay. It has to be clearly written. Okay. I mean, it's not even just that the Quran, they book conditions down. That it's an ayah from the Quran, yes. it's clearly written, it can be seen, everyone can read it. Ah. So it's not, even if it's written, but it's written in a scribbled manner, hatta is not permissible according to the ones who say. So w- what if it's written, but um, it's written, and then a lot of the time we find they wrap it, mm. and they, they make, they fold and fold and fold and fold into a very small little sort of a, a thing, and then they wrap it with plastic and tie it and, and then put it into the leather pouches. Okay. Uh, this is but, the but when you open it all up and you look at it, do you find the Quran written clearly? Can your eyes see it properly? Ninety-five percent of the time, from um, you know, I would say hundreds of cases that have been sent to us, ninety-nine percent there's no Quran. You know, very few, a few percent will find the actual Quran is mm. there. But even when it's written, it's like you say, it's scribbled. It's scribbled. It's no. not clearly written like you find in the Mus'haf, no. like neat and. No, the scholars they say. It has to be clear, it has to be seen, it has to be known that it's a verse from the Quran. Okay. So with those conditions stipulated, put there, then and only then, those who say it's permissible, then they argue it's permissible on those bases. Okay. But then none of them has ever said, on those who said it, that it's permissible for you to use the Quran, mm-hmm. none of the scholars have, from the Sahabas, mm-hmm. said you can put it in codes or numbers. Subhanallah. Jazakallah khair. So finally, Ustad, I think um, to wrap it up, Obviously, you've, you've given us some uh, good evidences in terms of the ta'weez and, and what it is and, you know, um, what the Sharia perspective on it is. Like in, let's say, for example, um, for the, the people at home watching this video, I'm thinking of taking a ta'weez off. You know, I've been wearing it. Somebody gave it to me. And I used to suffer from headaches, for example. Or I'm a husband or, you know, there's a wife who's found that it's brought peace within the household and I've seen all the evidence and I want to take it off but what, where does that leave me you know I, I, I've had this thing and it's done great for me so what can I do you know in terms of um, guidance from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what do I do next you know what, what should how can I protect myself now this concept of getting rid of it and destroying it is, is the first step that the person needs to take. Once now that you've found out the ruling mm-hmm. and you know what Allah wa ta'ala has commanded you mm-hmm. and that which he has told you and the Prophet has said to you a believer has no other choice except to submit. Mm-hmm. If Allah and his messenger command a matter you have no other choice except to submit. submit. Yeah. You have to follow and mm-hmm. adhere. In this situation, you have to follow that which Allah wa ta'ala has said and the Prophet in this issue. And that, what is it that Allah and His Messenger have commanded here? Is that you get rid of it. The Prophet told Imran ibn Hussein, throw it and destroy it. Yeah. So our brothers, Jazakumullahu khairat, may Allah bless you. You've put a process yeah. where the people who are wanting to take it off, a process, and inshallah ta'ala, which you will explain to them later, in which they need to take in order to get rid of it. Yes. The person has to straight away get rid of it. Yes. The Prophet didn't say to Imran, think about it, pray istikhara on it, you know what, discuss it. He didn't say that. Yeah. He said, throw it, get rid of it. The same. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud didn't ask his wife, what, why? He didn't talk to her. He just ripped it off. Got it off. Yeah. So th- to get rid of it. Yeah. So if your family members are wearing it and you have power over them, mm-hmm. like you have power over your children and what, rip it off. 
Okay. Rip it off and get it. If you're a doctor mm -hmm. and patients are coming to you mm -hmm. and they're wearing this and you have power, inshallah, and there's nothing, there's not a harm coming to you from it, then mm -hmm. cut it off. Mm -hmm. But what do we give the people? Now the alternative that the Sharia has placed. Yeah. A lot of these people that you see doing this, they don't even read Ayat al-Kursi. Mm -hmm. Which is أعظم آيات في كتاب الله. It's the greatest verse it's in the verse. Quran. Yeah. When the Prophet told, told the Sahabi al Jalil, Ka'ab ibn Malik, uh, when he told Ubay ibn Ka'ab, Abu al Mundhir, he said, يهنك العلم يا Abu Mundhir. You know, أي آية أعظم في كتاب الله? Do you know the greatest verses in the Quran? The, the great ayat. They don't even read Ayat al Kursi when they go to sleep. They don't even read the Mu'awwidatayn. When the Prophet got sick from the mm -hmm. magic that was placed pl 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 on him, yeah. what did he do? Did Allah tell him to take? Uh, Ta'weez and Tama'im mm -hmm. or did Allah wa command the Prophet to recite the Mu'awwidatayn yeah. so, uh, he was commanded to recite yes. they don't read those mm -hmm. the dua that the Prophet وسلم, in the hadith Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and Ahmad in his Muslim narrated that the Prophet وسلم, said one of you finishes his sleep and is over with his sleep he should say I'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamati min ghadabi wa iqabi wa sharri ibadi ومنها مزات الشياطين وأن يحضرون فإنه لا تضره. The person makes these أذكار. Yes. You have the small little book Fortress of Muslim written by سعيد بن وهف القحطاني. Looking at that book alone, you get all the du'as that you need to do daily. ولذلك the hadith that 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 book was named after the Fortress of a Muslim. That book is hadith in which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told us that the one who makes his du'a is like a person who ran from an enemy. And he got into, into a fortress. fortress. And the fortress is to protect you. The mm. adhkar is like that. The one who makes his adhkar, he's one who's going to be what? Who went into this fortress and he's away from his enemy. It's like a guard. Having a guard up, yeah. And the Prophet would do that for his grandsons, Hassan and Hussein, when mm. they would come, he would say, A'udhu bi kalimatillahi tamati. He would make this for them. Yeah. Never did he say, wear tamatim, and wear this and wear that. Yeah. So our guidance is, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا The Prophet is in, in him, He's a great example and a great role model. Something reading nice. these adhkar and reading these things is what he's commanded his companions. Blowing it onto your hands and then wiping it over your whole body. Reading Quran on yourself. Mm -hmm. These are, inshallah ta'ala, the ways to cure yourself and to gain the good that you're looking for. Inshallah. And placing your trust in. Without a shadow of a yeah. doubt. That Allah. your heart is connected to who? Yeah. To Allah ta'ala. And that you also believe with unwavering conviction. Yes. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas. In which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إحفظ الله يحفظك إحفظ الله تجده تجاهك إذا سألت فاسأل الله وإذا استعنت فاستعن بالله وعلم أن الأمة لو اجتمعوا على أن يفعوك بشيء لم يفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك وإن اجتمعوا على أن يضروك بشيء لم يضروك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك رفعت الأقلام وجفت الصحف That you need to first of all before this problem occurred to you, before this sickness occurred to you, before this bankruptcy occurred to you, or before it happens, remember and safeguard Allah's boundaries and His religion. Follow the orders that you were given. Stay away from that which you were told to stay away from. So the time when the illness befalls you, yeah. you lift your hands up, Allah is here to listen to you and obey, you, obey your calling. Yeah. Yeah. Eat halal and make sure your rizq and that which you're eating is halal. Don't eat haram and then lift your hands up with haram flesh. Or haram hands. Yeah. So all these are things that we need to take into consideration. All of these things are things that we need to follow. And we also need to believe that no one can benefit us except if Allah has written it for us. Mm -hmm. And no one can harm us, it, harm us except if Allah wa ta has written it for us. And our trust and our belief and itimad, reliance is on Allah wa ta uh, alone. Anything which I have said that is incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka atubu ilayh. Jazakallah khair, Ustad. Barakallahu fiqh. Um, inshallah, we're going to place some of the links below uh, to um, some of our other videos and also some of the dua and adhkar. Uh, we will link you to a good website where you can find these. Um, download them, print them off, put them around your house. Maybe you can say them uh, and try to memorize them. Um, and like Ustad Abdul Rahman uh, recommended, The Fortress of the Muslim is available from most good bookshops um, and it's a very, very cheap book. Um, maybe two pounds or three pounds. Keep it with you. It's small. You can put it in your top pocket and carry it around with you. Barakallahu um, feek for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.